book called Wander by Roseanne Perry, narrated by Fraser Reedman. Chapter 8. Found. The bachelor wolves are not hard to find. They howl on and on, a pride howl. They have taken meat, all the better for me. I will eat first and show them my hunting skill next time when I am stronger. I am grateful. Under the rough bark that has grown over my wound, my muscles ache and the hours of walking have made me weary. I will have to beg to eat with them. I will hate lowering my tail to these fools. But I must start somewhere. To join a pack, you must fight your way in or beg. And I am in no shape for fighting. Warm had a way of creeping toward me to play wrestle. He would let me win, and it made me love him and want to take care of him. I can pretend to be like Warm. I can make them want to take care of me. I look to the mountains of my home ground, all lit up with a setting sun. Pale bulbs will be there. There will be wet marking over mother's and father's signposts, gathering in our meeting place, hunting our elk. Sharp will be one of them now. He is alive, at least. Would it be worth it to stay on the home ground and live among strangers? I could go back. I could beg my way into the enemy pack, and then at least I would be home. What sort of a home would it be? Always following, always eating last. The bachelor wolves are not very impressive. They are young. They will get better. I could lead them someday. I will make myself strong and fight my way to the top. The prairie has elk and streams of water to keep us alive, and the sight of the mountains to lift our heads at the end of the day. What more does a wolf need? With that thought, I turn away from the mountains and head toward my new pack. Twilight is the stillest time of day. There is no wind to bring me the smell of what lies ahead. The bachelor wolves have stopped howling, but I can find them by the sound of their eating. They have caught something smaller than an elk, smaller than a deer even. It has black and white skin. It must be the pup of a cow. Father would not like that. Even worse than sheep, he would say. Only fit for coyotes and vultures, he would say. I am hungry. I have to eat what I can. I stop a safe distance away and make plans. Even in the still air, the smell of fresh meat is so good it makes my stomach groan. I should wait until they have eaten the best parts so they will not mind sharing what's left. But if I wait too long, there will be nothing. I am so hungry. It is too late in the day for birds to gather, so there is nobody to raise the alarm that I'm watching them. I sweep the tall grass all around to see if I have any competitors for the rest of the meat. There is someone out there. I might have missed it, but a slight twitch in a thick clump of grass catches my eye. I turn my ears that way and raise my head to smell. Warm? My heart skips a beat. I rise up taller and smell again. It's him, my warm. I would know him anywhere. I lift my head to howl and then freeze. He is hiding, hunched low to the ground, watching the bachelor wolves. His golden gray fur blends with the pale green and silver grasses. He's alone and afraid. I am in no shape to defend him if the bachelor wolves attack, and they might. Worm and I together are more of a threat to them. I hold back my howl. I circle around silently and find a cluster of tall yellow flowers behind him. The bachelor wolves are still feeding. There's not enough wind to carry my smell to Worm. I roll a rock with my paw. He lifts his head and turns his ears my way. I'm here. I woof to him as softly as I can. A shiver goes through Warm. He turns around to look. I step into the open. He creeps toward me. I let my wag go. Warm! I knew he would follow me. When he is at last by my side, he rests his chin on my shoulder with a deep sigh. Whatever happens now, we will be together. You're here, Warm says. I dreamed that you would be here. I rub my chin against his neck. We will travel together, I say, just like we planned. I can face anything now. The prairie is not so bad, I begin. 
There are elk, lots of them, and water. We will find a way, just the two of us. I nose him from shoulder to, and then I see them, claw marks, from his back to his rump, long, red, and angry. His back legs tremble even when he is standing still. I do not know how he is standing at all. The pain that still burns my shoulder must be nothing compared to his. His wounds are not running with red, not now, but they cut clear through his fur and skin and deep into muscle. I feel a revenge growl deep in my throat. Who did this? I will tear them apart with my own teeth. But even as my growl builds to a snarl, I know that whoever did this was bigger and stronger than me. How will I protect Warm now? I am wounded and weak myself. He is thin, so thin. I can feel each rib under my tongue as I lick his wounds. Rest, I say to him. I will bring you meat. I nose him down where the tall grass covers us both. He needs rest and food. He needs me. I knew you would get away, Worm says as he curls up on the ground at my feet. You are the fastest of us all. I lick his ears the way he likes. Across enemy ground and clear out here on the flat, you never gave up. I would follow you anywhere, he says. My heart aches for him. He has not said what became of mother and the pups. I want to know the truth, and I dread knowing. I have often seen warm scared, but never this weak. I cannot ask him, not now. I will feed him, I will make him better. And then, if mother and the pup survive, we will find them together. I turn back toward the bachelor wolves and their kill, toward the food that will save us both. <laughs>